three, two, and one, three, two, and one, three, two, and one. Welcome back, welcome back. Hopefully activity four was useful. Hopefully you guys are doing well on your revision and hopefully this helps. So activity five, what do we have to do? A management report will be the end result. So when we finish, we need to have a document or a file called management report. So just like in activity three, you need to tailor the language for the person who is your contact. And in this instance, for me, for the 2018 paper, I believe his name is Baljinder Singh. So as I said, back in, 20, um, back in activity three, I said Singh was about a medium level IT person, IT user who could understand some things. I, I believe I had low, medium, and I think high. Uh, again, let me just quickly go over this. Low would be somebody who doesn't really know IT very much. And I gave the example of an accountant who simply has the money to start a business. He doesn't know anything about IT. Other, he or she doesn't know anything about IT other than maybe using Microsoft Excel, using Windows, but we need to come in and set up their entire system. That person I would class as low. Somebody I would class as medium is somebody like Baljinder Singh who has very good knowledge or extensive knowledge on IT in general. I would say they're a medium and a high would be a specialist in that area who knows exactly what I'm talking about. And I only need to explain why I'm doing something, but not what I'm going to be doing. Um, activity four and five are linked, of course. You will refer to the evidence items again. So all the evidences that we use in activity four, um, the link is in the description so you guys can get a copy of the paper. I didn't read the paper because it would have taken too long. I did record the video, but it was like half an hour to edit. So I was like, no, that was too long. Activity five, what to do? Analyze the policies that they had in place or that the company had in place. Um, look at the actions taken that led to the incident. I'm gonna go into this at some more, don't worry. Compare the actions taken to the policy which was in place or which is in place. So the actions taken, you're going to compare that. So that's going to be versus the policy. So did the actions that were, were the actions taken that were in line with the policies? So for example, the policy might say, do this thing if this thing happens. Did they actually do that? Highlight where individuals went wrong or straight away from the policy. I'm going to keep saying this because this is the main thing that we need to focus on then how can we improve upon the policy and what do we tell people to do later on? So the policy is the overarching document or a set of rules that people are supposed to follow um, just in general. Next one, we have the, paper, the exam paper um, summed it up better than I actually did and it just gave two or three points. It said, review the incident. Was the procedure in place followed? Uh, so the policy or procedure in place, was it actually followed? Now suggest improvements and explain how they would prevent a similar incident in the future. So not only do you suggest improvements, but say, why do you think this improvement is going to be helpful? So you justify why you think this improvement is going to help prevent something like this from happening again. Uh, adherent, so adherence to forensic procedures, uh, the forensic procedure and current security protection measures, the security documentation. This was taken directly from the exam paper. So these are the three things that we will need to do. But again, I'm going to show my example. Again, this was taken from the examiner's report, not from the exam paper. For the top band mark, so you have past merit distinction, obviously. The document needs to be laid out logically. And this is how they think it might be laid out. So a title describing the thing that you're speaking about, a summary or introduction of the overarching problems that were faced, a main body with subsections and the justifications and or recommendations at the very end. And again, you... I, I would call this justification and recommendations or recommendations with a justification because you have to recommend something, then you have to justify why did you recommend that. So maybe I put and instead of or. Uh, step one, make a list of all the mistakes made by the parties involved. So the people who left the phone on the table, the security who didn't check if, every, if everything was okay, the person who sorted out the CCTV, the person who programs the card machine, whatever mistake you think is there, make a list of all of them. Look at the procedure that deals with that specific activity. So for example, leaving the phones and laptops out probably links to these three things here. And I have the theft of IT equipment happened, theft of data, even though they said that there were only like Word documents on there of the current day's work, there might be something else. This is me reaching, obviously, but I would still do theft of data because we don't know if something else was on the laptop from someone's previous work, we can make the assumption that there might be because the policies that are in place currently don't seem to be followed by everyone. So someone might have left something on there. So essentially plan for the worst and hope for the best. 
if there is no data stolen, perfectly fine. If there is data stolen, we should have something in place. And then we have unauth unauthorized access to BCTAA systems. Now, the systems in terms of the server and the, and, and the switch weren't affected as far as we know. What could have happened, the person took the laptop and in, I think on the evidence it said the laptop turned up in Nairobi, Kenya, and they were able to log into the laptop and they were also able to connect to a Wi-Fi network. This tells us that the laptop has um, maybe no password on there, maybe not encrypted, or the person who stole it knows the details. But I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that the person who stole it does not have the details and the person who stole it was able to log into the system perfectly fine. So that's why we managed to get a ping from the device in Nairobi, Kenya. And step two, I would say, say how the procedures were not adhered to. So say how they were not followed. So for example, the laptop on the phone should have been locked away with the other devices. This would have ensured that they, uh, they were out of sight and possibly out of reach. Because if something is locked away behind a locked cupboard in a room with a key and all of that, the person who came in to steal small items, they're probably going to just look around the desk, look around the table. They probably don't want to make too much noise to try and break a door handle off, um, if that were the case. And for step three, what can be done to improve the system? So again, uh, the recommendations. And this is going to be on the policies and on the individuals. I believe it, it mainly focuses on the policies, but these two things really and truly go hand in hand. So whatever you say in the policy, individuals should follow that. And this is your recommendation. So you recommend things, but also justify. Why do you think it's a good idea to ensure that every single Friday afternoon before everyone leaves, you have a head count of every single mouse, every single keyboard, every single laptop, every single phone, tablet, count everything. And on maybe a Monday morning, you count again. And maybe on the next Friday evening, you count again. Why do you think that's a thing that should be in the policy? This might be to ensure that we have a grip on what is being stolen, when it's been, st as in a rough time frame as to when it's been stolen. Because in the brief and the evidence that we have, they don't actually know when the wireless mouse and keyboards were taken. These might have been taken months and months ago, but they had no idea because no one was checking, no one was doing a head count. And that's it for activity five. So my next point or my next video, sorry, is going to be me doing activity five. I'm going to just steal the bullet points from the examiner's report because I don't want this to take too long. So thank you for watching. Hopefully this was useful and good luck.